Hi, I'm Dr. Sean McSan, and here we look at a menu of models that are out there. So far we've been talking about log normal prices, you know, where you had the share price was equal to, a, or the where the change in the share price was equal to a trend term proportional to the share price plus a Wiener noise random term which had expectation zero and that model can be used in many many cases since you often just want percent returns on your investment which is captured well by log normal processes and you can get more than the risk free rate so that comes at a price and typically the sharp ratio which is the excess return above the risk free rate divided by the volatility is used to compare different investment options as in you can get higher returns but it comes with a higher volatility another model that pops up all over the place is mean reversion so that can be used where the price is pulled back to a value so that when the price gets high it tends to drift back or when the price is low it drifts up so the movements are around about maybe a long-term average level so for example we have the whole white model which is used when we're looking at interest rates and there you have dr so the change in interest rate is equal to well you know that looks like r log normal it has a rdt term plus a sigma dz which is our familiar noise term with an expectation of zero so the difference here is that we have theta of t minus a times r dt which means that when r is or when a times r is above theta then the change in r is going to be negative so r is going to be dragged down at the same time if r is or a times r is smaller than theta then the trend term is positive so that's going to push r up so this is often used when we're dealing with commodities where if the price goes up more production comes online since investors find it easy to raise money to drill for more oil for example more production comes online till the supply matches or exceeds the demand and so drags the price down so that's the kind of thing that the mean inversion model captures remember if the price so the whole white model we were talking about interest rates so if the interest rate went too high then that would maybe pull cripple the economy and then they'd have to try and lower interest rates to stimulate things likewise if the price falls again we're talking about commodities and in particular say oil well then the production collapses since it's often sold for less than it costs to produce and then that brings the price back up since all these places that are very expensive where it maybe costs eighty dollars a barrel just to get the oil well those places have to sh close down if oil is down at 50 or 60 and again that's captured in the mean aversion model if the price is too low the change in price is positive and that it'll, it'll push the price back up and again that's not captured in the log normal model that there you just have a trend going up with a noise term so it doesn't have the structure 
of the mean reversion model. That said, if you look at oil prices for the last 30 years, well then it actually fits the log normal distribution. So often the effect is too subtle to make any difference. So it's not clear whether it's worth the hassle of implementing a mean reversion model. But it could be that we're in a period where the mean reverting model outperforms. And maybe you want to implement both of them so yeah, you know what both are saying. Since we don't actually know which one is going to be right, it's still better to know, oh, actually at the moment there's a big difference between what the mean reversion model is saying and what log normal is saying. Finally, in both log normal and mean reversion, the price can actually become negative, which doesn't make sense. This can be avoided using log R instead of R in a mean reversion model like whole white. That adds more complexity. It doesn't have an analytic solution, so you have to weigh it up. Is this worth the hassle? At the same time, you know, when you're considering what models to use, you always have that trade-off that an analytic solution is far faster, but a numerical one has far more flexibility. That's basically what you have to do all the time. And we've already come across it a couple of times, even in the few lessons that we have at the moment, but that's always there in the background.